Honestly, some of the weirder ones might have been from myself. I'm a big dancer, you know, uh, I like to feel the beat. Big music guy, I think I'll go just kind of side to side step. Yeah, yeah, something like this, side to side. And then you can kind of expand from there. I don't know what you do exactly, you freestyle. Yeah, you just gotta feel it. I always, uh, you know, warmed up before the game, uh, listening to really bad Euro uh, electronic music that my teammates made fun of me for. I think it was like, I was like 10 years old. I won, I got a shout out that night and I had, I'd watched the movie Clueless. And I had the theme song stuck in my head the whole game. So that became the song that I sang every game for the rest of my career. Uh, can you do a little bit of it for us right now? Oh my God, okay. Please. She has everything and she'll give it to you in a second, looks can't deceive. Probably only uh, reinforce the stereotypes of the weird goalies, but um, as, a, as a minor hockey player, I ate a pack of Skittles before every game, red Skittles only. But there was one moment, maybe about half a year, I remember, I think I ended up I had something in my mouth there and I, I spat over my shoulder and I played really well that game. So I kept spitting over my shoulder for like months after that for no reason. Uh, but thinking that this was gonna somehow help me perform. My favorite player growing up was Cliff Ronning. While I was playing center, I would do the exact same thing as Cliff Ronning, which was he would touch his visor with his left and right glove before he would take a draw. I played with a guy that kind of his whole warm up revolved around a stopwatch. So he had everything timed to the second almost. So when he'd stretch and uh, where he'd go in the dressing room and when he'd kind of do his sticks and when he'd do a little you know, workout, when he'd eat. I would play club hockey and I always had uh, the, same, uh, the same Jamaican restaurant uh, I would always go to before every club game and uh, I'd always eat the same, uh, the same thing every, uh, every Friday. We would do like our more cultural kind of food. So we would do like biryani, sometimes like nahari, like and just like, and then whoever our friends were at the time, they would come over and bring like kind of whatever they had. And then we would all like put it, lay it all yeah. out on the table in the room and then we'd all just go and dive into it. Oh, my four-year-old son has um, a massive amount of tradition. So every time we go on the road, uh, I have to send him videos of the warm-up. Uh, so the introduction video, then the warm-up, and then the intros before the game, and then the national anthem. If I don't send them promptly or on time, I get a message uh, where he's not too happy with me. I haven't sent enough videos. During the playoffs, we were allowed. To, there was no bedtime, and that's a tradition I've carried off with my own children. They don't do homework on, in playoff series. I don't want to check the homework, so that's fine. Um, and I think that there's ways in which there's traditions of us watching and eating and celebrating. And my mother's a very, very emphatic fan, and I get that from her, which can be a problem if I'm in the press box because you're not supposed to do that. I'm not superstitious, I'm a little stitious, in the words of Michael Scott. 